Hi, welcome to Shelf Starters. Today we're talking about Marie de France and her lays. Yes. So, Hello, what did you think, Mark? Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, how could you not enjoy them? Obviously, you know, they're romance. We're into romantic territory. So, mm -hmm. story, love, um, I guess the difference between really deep personal love and love you're allowed to have openly is really interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and loyalty, loyalty all that stuff yeah um so the actual story about Marie de France is really interesting as well like who the actual author is let's start with her yeah yeah so they think that she is from France obviously it's yeah. just that the these like poems were found the laser like poems I guess like kind of like um, poems. They're, they're now yeah 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 full stories yes um and they've just been signed as like Marie of France. Yeah. And so no one really knows exactly who that is. And there are some um, suggestions of who she might be. It was um, possibly an abbess of Shaftesbury, an illegitimate daughter of Geoffrey of Anjou and half sister of Henry II. Yeah, that I definitely have read that part, the um, half sister. Of Related Henry. to Henry II. That's the part yes. that I think possibly that is the most likely. Yes. one because that's definitely what I hear quite often and that she obviously is writing for the nobles for the court yeah and I think there's mention of um Eleanor of Aquitaine yes as well yes so Sometimes. we're talking we're talking 12th century yes yeah yeah yep, yep. um so yeah in the reign of Henry II of England 1154 to 1189 Century. Yeah. So the ones we've got um, from Norton's are, um, so we don't know much about her other than that. And obviously the nobility aspect is really important. Um, mm -hmm. And because... And she spoke several languages, so she was clearly yes. educated. She spoke Latin, English and French. But the interesting thing is that she writes these lays not in Latin. Mm -hmm. That's the interesting thing. She uses the vernacular. She uses, you know, the everyday language. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they are very accessible in the version we have. Highly. Oh, sure. The translator for this is Dorothy Gilbert, and I think she's done an amazing job because amazing. not only like the story, you're know, all there really clearly and things like it's very easy to read. Um, it also thought she manages to still do the the rhyming couplets. Yes, so um, the rhyming couplets. Which, what do you think? How did you feel about reading? I, I, so I read, um, I, I reread these in the Norton edition because I had actually, when I was back in Sydney, I had read the full um, Penguin Classics edition yes. that has all of her lays um, and those are not done in... in um, rhyming couplets. Yeah, they're in prose. Which is a bit sad because that is... Like a little story. Defining yeah, so I still really enjoyed them at the time, but I think it's kind of nice to have an idea of what the form actually looked like. Absolutely. Absolutely, because yeah. they were written to be heard and performed, or you know. To yes, be she heard. says that they were performed. Um, yeah. She says that she had heard these performed. Yeah. Um, and the lay is really important for Breton history. Yes, I've never been to Britain. It's specific to that um, that region. Neither, but um, yeah, I've recently done a, a project in about Breton, so I, yeah. I do find it very interesting as a language. Um, but yeah, so it's from Brittany and has more of the Celtic influence correct as yeah, well that I read as well yeah. yeah yeah um what I really liked about these was that they are like a um they feel like fairy tale kind of stories are they really like it good? feels very Disney movie kind of <laughs> thing like it ends happily mostly well you've got this figure in in the, you know this fairy you know queen sort of well not a queen yes in queen. in one of them yeah. yeah yeah who features and that it yeah it's lovely isn't it Mm. which one did you did you have a favorite of the or we should explain what the three are yes okay so we have milan yes um and this is the one about the um like the kind of uh doomed lovers kind doomed. of situation doomed being the word he's like in a permanent purgatory <laughs> yeah um where they they had an affair she had a baby yes um and then she was married off to someone else while he was away fighting people. Yes. Um, and so then they have to communicate. They're, they're like, their love is obviously then banned because yes. now it's adulterous. And they have to communicate via a swan. 
Yeah, well, they have a, the letter is hidden in the feathers of the swan. Yeah, they they send like it's kind of like like Harry Potter owls, owl post. Buckets, yes, like, it is. It, a lot of it reminded me <laughs> of yeah of Harry Potter, but it also reminded me of Leader and the Swan and Yates. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know much about Yates. We'll get to him yeah. for sure. <laughs> Not very far yeah, yeah. from now. I no, swans are very symbolic. Um, mm. You know, they of, of pairs and partnering and relationships. And love, yeah. And love. Yeah, they're very. So. Well, it reminds, like, obviously you think the swan princess. Um, right. Yeah, and the other thing, interesting thing that I, that was here was the the ring the symbolism of the ring as well that the ring gets given to the baby yes. as like evidence of where where he's yeah. from so when he's yeah. older they'll explain it yeah. and it's the way that the father then finds him well, at the end does the son have a pivotal role in reuniting his parents he does yeah because they they basically they have this dramatic um i guess it's like dramatic irony right where they're um they're brought together in battle father and son yes um and like the audience knows that they are father and son they do not yeah um and then they the father recognizes the son by the ring yes so they they realize that they are father and son and then yes the father the son brings his father back to his mother and reunites the parents which is really very sweet i mean it's like an idyllic little fairy tale where everything ends happily despite (laughs) and, and then the husband just dies around it conveniently so that they can get married <laughs> yes <laughs> at the end yeah well fate is a big thing mm-hmm. the- yeah so i guess they're not really they were only doomed at the beginning yeah but they were that being fine um yeah i liked this one i thought it was cute um Same. i thought it was I, lovely i liked that the when the kid is born, he has like all of these talents and things. Where's that? Yeah. I mean, and there were, you know, there was, it was sort of very, it was very gentle, I thought. Yes. And very, you know, um, naive almost, you know, innocent. There's a purity about it. Even when I, there's a joke in there, I think, a sexual joke, like a double entendre. And, but even that is so naive and, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Childish. Yeah. It's really very sweet, I think. Yeah. It's a nice story. Yeah. What do you think of the next one, Lanval? That's my favourite one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow, that was not my favourite one. Really? I liked this one because it's this is the more Arthurian one. This is the one that's actually yes. set in Arthur's court. Yes. Um, and has Queen Guinevere featuring quite heavily in the round table and everything. Yep. Um, and it's about a knight who's riding along and then he comes across um, two women who are like these fae-like creatures um and bring him to their queen and he falls in love with her and they have to make a deal that um he won't tell who she is yeah yeah so then and then later Guinevere is trying to seduce him and he rejects her and he rejects her because he loves someone else but he's unable to say who it is and then the part that I thought was really interesting was when she accuses him of being gay I know that was just a random whoa okay she said it is often rumored sire for women you have no desire yeah but youths and squires well-trained young men you seek out you just fought with them um so I looked this up yeah and it was a big thing at that time so there was the third Lateran council 1179 um which involved the excommunication of people who were guilty of sodomy Right. Um, and in France, it was punishable by hanging. So right. the fact that she says this, it's it's apparently not only dangerous for him, but like it it's dangerous for everyone around because now everyone. everyone's under suspicion. Yeah. And so yeah. that's like a very big, like dramatic thing really? to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it really raises the stakes. Yes. Um, so I thought that was really interesting that that would feature at this time period because we haven't had anything like that come up. No, no, so far. Yeah. Uh, I think I liked this more maybe because I have been reading the Arthurian stuff yes, and so I'm true. seeing, you know, there's mention of all the knights that you know really well, like Gawain and um, Yvonne and all that. Um, yeah, and then and I like this otherworldly creature. Yes, yes. Um, and what about yeah. the authorial um, intrusion? Like how did you go with that? These are, those interjections? I find that fun. That was, that was good. Yeah, you were okay yeah. with that? Yeah. Yeah, did you think it t- took you out of the story? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the next one, Chevrofoil. And that's because you love Tristan. I know, <laughs> I do. 
and I like the whole symbolism and the honeysuckle and the hazel branch, hazelwood branch being intertwined. That's the only sad one um, because uh-huh. it's just, it's like a, a section of the story that we know of Tristan is Isolt, um, where they're unable to meet and so they have to communicate via this like symbolism. Yeah, to have their love public is impossible. So they have to have yeah. this very harbour this deep private love. Mm-hmm. And they have the secret meetings, isn't it? Like that's Romeo and Juliet. That's you know, that's all the you know, so many romance mm. stories. And I like that. I love that actually. Yeah. But it's just it's such a snapshot. I, that was probably my least favorite because um it's just not like a complete story. I no, guess it's like it's you have to wait to see what happens next. Yeah. Yeah. No, I enjoyed it. Look, all in all, I love the lace. I thought they were really oh no, you know, I really got into them. I yeah, I, and I liked the authorial stuff. I like when they like you know, int- someone is introducing it, like it says, much pleased I am to tell the tale. Um, I shall recount the truth, the sum, why it was made and how all of that and then at the end it sort of sums it up now I've encountered all that's true about this lay I've told to you I, just I like, like and I like well that's very it reminds me entirely of, of Romeo and Juliet in fact like having a prologue oh yeah like having a prologue yeah yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that and I, I you know yeah I found lots of it really recognizable you know like yeah we, we still have these conventions and I even found the language recognisable when they had the occasional word that was kind of based in French. Oh, I like that the translator that. did that. Yeah. yeah, I like that he did that. Yeah. Um, I definitely think if that wasn't done in the version that I had originally read, yeah. I think that um, this is just like her her choice and I, it was it worked well. She did language um, words where, you know, like it was obvious to everyone what it was, like Emmy. Yes. Um, and I think there was one that was a, yeah, like, the word a for castle, one. the word for castle. The word for castle, the word for damsel. I enjoyed all of that. Yeah, chastel. Yep. Um, which is old French. Yes, I, oh. I I like that, and I did love the couplets. I thought that was really good. Yeah, it did they're just me. really easy to read. Like the they, yeah, was great, wasn't it? The rhythm was just really good. Yeah, it feels like yeah, like a fairy tale that you would hear. Yes. As a child. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But so, no, Longval I thought was so good because it also has a bit about Avalon and stuff. Yeah, like I like that Avalon. I was going to say that. Yeah, the whole and being the rescued, other world stuff. Yeah. yeah, rescued by the the lover. Yeah, I liked all that. And more of Longval, no one has heard. I cannot tell another word. Yeah, once he gets whisked off to the other world. Off. Oh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, also, this. really sexual that one. Um, with the like the descriptions of the women in Longval yes. are like yes, very um seductive. Yeah. They're like they're very wearing much, very, barely any um, real concentration on their their robes that stick to their body. Yeah, they're like they're just yeah they're like figure hugging, but they're yeah. also slit at the sides and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So there's bare flesh showing. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was pretty modern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like rich purple taffeta they wore next to their skin and nothing more. Yeah, yeah, very um, lots of very all down her sides the flesh sh- could show her form was fine her hips were low <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, good fun really good. and also um I thought the imagery like the color imagery was really great so they yeah the purple rose the purple, but also yeah. um a lot of white for the really magical creatures so um but the, she's on a white the horse the purple you know the church and women you know really mm-hmm. both. royalty yes yeah yeah um but no but everything's like this uh sort of magical and angelic white sort of imagery so she's in a a white chance and a chemise yes in in the like dress it um at this point anyway on a white horse um her neck white as a branch in snow her face was white um her hair is blonde gold thread um, her hair in sunbeams bright so it's just all that very like sh- like that kind of shiny glowy yes kind of imagery um yeah. that thought was really interesting kind of like in Lord of the Rings who is the Kate Blanchett character oh um yeah but we're the worst Lord of the Rings people but you know at the beginning like she's all in white and I she's know. kind of glowing. yeah 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 and it's not like a oh, snow queen sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah, really interesting. I like that. Um, what do we think is going to, oh, well, next we have Sir o- Orfeo. 
Is that right? Yes, so that um, is going to be like Orpheus and, and Eurydice. Yep, so that's 13. Every time that. 1300s, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our next next one. I'm finding it really fun going through through the Norton, I have to say. Me too. We're, actually, we're about a third, more than a third of the way through, I think. Yes, and um, I think what we'll do in um, maybe in about a week when we have a little more time to plan and things like that, we'll um, make a video of the ones that are coming up and like when to expect them, just in case you are wanting to read along because I realise we've only been putting down like a week at a time, which it doesn't give anyone much of a chance to find it. Yeah, um, and especially as we get, we're getting really close to the Canterbury Tales and I want everyone to have enough time to get that. Yes. and be able to read along with us and I think we will we won't do that in one video we'll probably split it into several parts so we can yeah. actually cover the whole thing because that's what you and I've been really wanted to read the whole thing for that totally yes yeah and so and we'll, we'll you, maybe you, next week we'll time that recently so you've yeah done, and then I can done throw your, my cat blog yeah yeah done your little very excited for that um all right well let us know if you read the lays what you thought of them um if you read any of the others that aren't in here that you would recommend no, that we check yeah. out as well i've only read left. three so i'd be interested to hear from anyone who has yeah. recommendations or experiences yeah, the others yeah that'd be great lovely cool. okay all right thanks everyone for watching see you again next time bye, bye.